Today we'll take a look at the Redback 120 volt cordless power tool battery. I will also do a tear down of this battery to show you what's inside. Let's get started. Power tool batteries are usually at lower voltage and for a good reason. It is safer to run at low voltage and also keep the battery small and lightweight. That's the whole point of being cordless, right? But the problem with running at lower voltage will arise when you try to run a more heavy duty tool. Tools with lower voltage cannot keep up with the power demands if you run a more powerful tools. That's why we got a variety of 40V, 60V and even 80V cordless power tool. But 120 volts? There are only a few manufacturers that make 120 volt cordless power tools. Redback is one of them. The other one is Oregon cordless power tool. The Walt also make 120 volt cordless miter saw, but they cheat by using two 60 volt flex volt batteries connected in series. I bought this Redback chain saw when it was on sale for a very good price, and it also comes with a 120 volt battery and a 120 volt charger. But I'm not really interested in the chainsaw. What I'm interested in is the 120 volt battery and the applications I'm going to use it with, other than running the chainsaw. So how safe is it to run on a 120 volt DC? Let's find out. I'm going to simulate the highly unlikely event that you or your children might accidentally poke your finger or even put your tongue into the terminal. This was actually the very first thing I thought of when I first saw these 120 volt batteries. I've been electrocuted by both 120 volt and 220 volt AC. It was bad, but people say DC is worse because the current is constant, so you're like sucked into it. Alright, I'm gonna try and touch the terminals with my bare hands, see what it feels like. But first, Let's see what the voltage are on these terminals. So we got positive and negative terminal on either sides. In the middles we got common and ID and T. These are for balanced charging. Now let's see what kind of voltage we got on these terminals. Got my battery fully charged. That's 125 volts, 125.1 volts on the battery terminals. Let's see about other terminals here. This one is the same, 125. The middle one is the same thing, 125. This one is 97 volts. So it's a little bit less. Alright, here we go. Try and see if I can squeeze my finger in there. That's quite deep. I can't I can't push in there. Alright, let's try something else. Got a couple of metal clips here. And I'm just gonna push it right in there. So I'm just gonna try the 97 volts first. That's between P plus and C plus. a couple of alligator clips here connected to my meter show you 97 volts so here we go please do not try this at home hmm nothing I'm touching it nothing happened don't feel a thing let me show you this angle uh, like this no feeling. No feeling. So next step, the main battery terminal, 125 volt DC. And show you here, that's P plus and P minus. All right, are you ready? Ah! I'm just kidding. What's on my taser? All right, are you ready? Whew, I'm nervous. Let me do this first. So I'm just gonna dial. To get ready. 
All right, here we go. Ooh. Nothing happens. Is it dead? It's 125 volts. Show you this angle. I, I don't feel anything. Here we go. This angle. Nothing. Again, this angle. Right on it. Two adjacent fingers. I don't feel anything. Not a thing. Hmm. I don't know why 125 volt DC has no effect while this 110 volt AC will hurt really bad. Would we'll probably kill me too. But this, nothing. So my next step is, I'm going to disassemble this battery pack and show you what's inside. It's got four T10 torque screw all the way in there. It's not security screws, they're just regular torque screws. I'm going to need something like this. Alright, so all the screws are out. Check out what we got inside. So here is the actual battery pack itself. We got Samsung Ionar 18650 high discharge cell. These are 2 amp hour each. And there are a total of 30 cells, all connected in series. The battery pack is divided into two halves, in which on each side we got 15 cells in series. And then both of these are connected together in series again by this bridge right here in the middle and on the bottom we got the BMS charging circuit so here we've got a TP456 board and I can use this to charge a single 18650 cells and you look close enough each of these small circuit looks pretty much similar to one of these TP456 and there are 30 of these circuits to charge 30 of these cells and balance charge all the cells at the same time. And that's all I have for now. I have some plans for this battery for my next project and I'll show you that in my next video. I'll give you a hint though. Make this XT60 connector for the battery. So when I plug it in here, it will give me 125 volts out of this connector. Alright, until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.